Sarah has asked me to speak about the fluids. So, I'll speak about the fluids. <laughs> um, this, of course, is the work of step eight. And that's really, sincerely, something you need to not approach until you reach step eight. Because this number one requires absolute mastery of the elements, especially the fire element and the water element. But really, all the elements must be completely under your control at this point. And you must have a lot of experience with accumulating the elements and have a, a high uh, resistance level to it so that you can accumulate huge amounts of these elements and, you know, be comfortable and uh, withstand it and not be affected by it. This also comes when we're dealing with the uh, mental equilibrium of the elements and in step eight you're really finalizing that equilibrium. So that has to be well along the way as well before you begin working with the fluids. Um, because this is rather extreme. Um, yeah, very extreme work. Um, Barton lists two methods for accumulating the fluids, an inductive and a deductive. And uh, it took me a long time to really figure out which is which, you know, as I was always confusing these two titles. So the inductive method is uh, you begin by accumulating, the, well, not really accumulating, you begin envisioning um, the elements, the universal elements uh, surrounding you. Okay, so let's start with fire. The fire surrounds you and it becomes really, really intense, dense accumulation, uh, an external accumulation of the fire elements, the whole universe of the fire element. Um, is surrounding you and pressing in on you, but you're not letting the fire element in. But when you have that large an accumulation of the fire element, what penetrates into your body is light, basically. You know, uh, just imagine yourself in the middle of a fire. I mean, there's <laughs> a lot of light because <laughs> fire produces light. And so light enters into you. But in the presence of that dense and accumulation of the fire element, you will automatically be generating the electric fluid. It's sort of an alchemical process. Uh, when it's that intense, the electrical fluid begins to form on the exterior of your body. You are the surface, basically, that the electric fluid forms on, okay? Now, the deductive method, you are inhaling, you are drawing in the fire element into your body and creating such an intense accumulation. And this is where it's, you know, very important that you have fully mastered the fire element because the accumulation you are going to need to have on the inside of your body to generate the electric fluid on the surface of your body. So the outside of your body is the surface on which the electric fluid forms in the presence of that dense and accumulation. The same thing holds for uh, the water element and the magnetic fluid. Okay? So this is where, you know, the, there's some confusion in Barden's wording in Initiation to Hermetics because um, he sort of says that the, the fluids come from the elements. It's really the, the reverse. The elements come from the fluids. There's the two fluids and then the four elements. Um, but this exercise, we use the elements to accumulate the fluids. 
once you comprehend the fluids in that way through direct personal experience of them, it becomes possible to accumulate the fluids directly from the universe. Okay? So you don't have to go through the elements, through this massive accumulation of the elements to obtain the fluids. You can, but you don't have to. But that's quite a ways down the line, because it takes quite a while generally to get to that point of not only generating the fluids, but accustoming yourself to using the fluids, to have the fluids in and around your body and, you know, for extended periods of time and do things with those fluids. Yeah, that takes some acclimating um, to get used to because they are such primal things. Um, they're very different than the elements, working with them. Um, once I begin working with the fluids, they're very fluid, you know, it's a, a perfectly good uh, name for them because they're, they're like fluids. Um, if you can imagine the electric fluid being a, a current of lightning, um, that kind of static current, and it's very fluidic. Um, or like the, well, yeah, it's very fluidic. And same with the magnetic fluid. The, its action is fluidic. You know, it draws things in, knits things together, calms things, slows things. And it has a very fluid action. And the projection of the fluids is, again, very fluid. The elements, you know, once I started working with the fluids, the elements sort of seemed uh, clunky to me, you know, uh, clumpy, um, not fluid, but structural, um, architectural, you know, in a way, um, that I really didn't realize until I started working with the fluids. Um, so, you've got to have perfected your work with the elements before you try this work. And made great, well, your astral equilibrium of the elements has to be, you know, uh, concrete. <laughs> um, and your mental equilibrium of the elements has to be well progressed at this point before you work. Or you're going to cause yourself serious difficulties, you know. Um, this can be physically harmful and you can do damage to others with the fluids. The fluids, working with the fluids on another person is um, a great responsibility, okay? Because they are very powerful, very direct, um, very immediate in effect. Um, the electrical fluid, it's more used for, well, let me put it this way, the magnetic fluid is used mostly for healing because um, it, it realigns structures in the body to mirror, perfectly mirror the astral imprint. Um, the astral template, the, the perfectly healthy body that is the astral template versus the physical um, padding, if you will, that gets stuck to that astral template and gets mushed around a little bit and sometimes gets very out of sync with the astral template and thus unhealthy. So the magnetic fluid brings the physical structure back into alignment with the magnetic template, the astral template. Um, now, electric fluid is good in healing work for, for clearing out disease, for clearing out infection. That's the electric fluid. It gets rid of things. It cleanses things. 
in the way that fire cleanses things, um, not in the way that water cleanses things. That's the magnetic fluid, okay? Um, the electric fluid is, is used to increase things, to increase the vitality of things, uh, to promote growth. So it's very good in healing. You know, uh, healing a wound. Uh, the, the, the electric fluid helps in that, but still it's the magnetic fluid that, that creates the structure that the electric fluid can uh, increase and make um, the return quicker. Um, it can be very complex dealing with these fluids and, and takes a lot of direct hands-on experience in your own body, you know? Um, just like you do with the, the vital energy and the elements, you experience them in your own body first. And this is what you want to do with the fluids, is one of the first works. Um, they also can be used to forward your, your, your astral and mental work. You know, they're not just about their physical effects. Uh, and you'll get to that eventually with a vaulting, uh, which is a, a very powerful use of the fluids. I've spoken about that a little bit before. Um, so, the, the, the fluids are powerful. <laughs> They're next level above working with the elements. Um, so, you've got to, again, master the elements and master the Akasha, too. You know, the work with the Akasha comes before this work with the fluids. Work with the fluids is fairly uh, late in the initiation into Hermetics. Uh, for a good reason. Again, you can hurt yourself uh, and you can hurt others. So, you have to use caution and awareness when working with the fluids. I think that's about all I have to say at this point. So, um, videos are going to be like you know, every two weeks maybe for a while while I'm working on this, uh, this fourth golem. So, I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.